Dustin Heron with the Robo Agri Finance uh, joins us. We've been talking about the, his report, uh, the case for capacity, and talking about the uh, the cattle industry, kind of specifically. Uh, Dustin, as we uh, talked, to kind of setting up to where we are now. Uh, the, the bottom line is really trying to increase uh, beef demand uh, and profitability. So uh, talk about, you know, in your report, you say that uh, a plan like this could bring uh, profitability to, to all uh, phases of the supply chain. Uh, talk about that. Right. So, so the opportunity to expand has really developed over the last several years as we, as we have expanded cattle supplies, we've really challenged our, our capacity to get those cattle harvested. At the same time, we've seen growing beef demand, both domestically and globally. And right now, the U.S. has better export market access than we've ever had. So if we can take this opportunity, that's probably the best opportunity that we've seen in decades to expand packing capacity, we could really more evenly distribute profitability across the beef supply chain, help maintain beef cow numbers, and position the U.S. to really capitalize on growing global beef demand. And I think that's one of the things that uh, kind of coming out of this report is uh, uh, where we can maintain and what kind of stabilize uh, the, the cycle, if you will, and so we don't have uh, maybe such a heavy call uh, if we need to because of market forces, not necessarily because of, uh, of other factors? Right. The, the beef cattle industry naturally goes through cycles of expansion and contraction. And we've started to enter one of those contractionary phases. And that's definitely a challenge for any capacity expansion in the short term because as that expansion comes online, we'll have a smaller cattle supply than what we have today. But with the right type of capital investment and capital reserves to get through those first few years, there's really, like I said, opportunity to capitalize on a dynamic consumer whose demands and preferences are evolving, uh, a growing global middle class, and really position the U.S. to, to maintain the size of the beef industry and you know, capitalize on the future demand for protein. Well, again, as we wrap this up, uh, looking back, will we see any expansion as far as from a harvesting uh, facility or a uh, whole situation be primarily where it is now where we're seeing it in the Midwest uh, or will it be uh, pockets or will it just be a simply a matter of uh, wherever the demand is? So geography is a key factor. You know, obviously, cattle are fed in, in the High Plains region for a reason. Uh, climate, labor, available feed supplies, socioeconomics, and we really expect that to continue. Being in the proximity of feed yards is a, an important um, efficiency aspect for packing plants. Now, there may be you know, certain areas where there's more opportunity to expand than others, but, but by and large, it will remain where fed, the fed cattle are. The case for capacity, a new report out from uh, Rabo Research, uh, Dustin Heron, who is a animal protein analyst for Rabo AgriFinances has joined us. Uh, uh, Dustin, again, thanks so much. You're very welcome. Stay with us, we'll have more coming up. 